Hello students, welcome to the lecture on invertebrates and after this lecture we will be able to learn the following objectives. Understand animal kingdom, explain sponges, explain nidarians, explain flat worms, define round worms, describe annelids, understand arthropods and echinoderms, describe groups of arthropods, explain invertebrate evolution, Understand form and function in invertebrates. There are many different types of animals in the world. Many animals are quite similar to each other. Others are quite different. Animals can be classified based on their similarities. Animals can be classified by whether or not they have a backbone. Animals with a backbone are called vertebrates. Animals without backbones are called invertebrates. Over 97% of animals are invertebrates. Further, vertebrates and invertebrates are divided into various phylums. There are about 5,000 species of sponges found throughout the world. Most sponges are found in oceans, although some groups are found in fresh waters such as lakes. They were the first group of animals that has specialized cells to do special jobs. However, the cells are not so advanced as to form tissues. Sponges live singly or in colonies. Many sponges give off a toxic or poisonous substance. Some sponges appear green because algae cling to them. The algae provide oxygen for the sponge and the sponge provides carbon dioxide for the algae. When two living things live off of one another, it is called symbiosis. Anatomy The body of a sponge has two outer layers separated by an acellular having no cells gel layer called the mesophyll, also called the mesenchyme. Diet Sponges are filter feeders. Most sponges eat tiny floating organic particles and plankton that they filter from the water that flows through their body. Food is collected in specialized cells called coanocytes and brought to other cells by amoebocytes. Reproduction Most sponges are hermaphrodites. Fertilization is internal in most species. Some released sperm randomly float to another sponge with the water current. Some sponges also reproduce asexually. Fragments of their body, buds are broken off by water currents and carried to another location where the sponge will grow into a clone of the parent sponge. Classification Kingdom Animalia Animals Phylum Porifera Sponges Classes Calcarea Calcareous sponges having spicules. Demospongiae, horn sponges like the bath sponge. Scleropongiae, coralline or tropical reef sponges. And hexactinellida, glass sponges. Form and function in sponges. Water current system. The essential elements of the water current system include the pores or ostia through which water enters the sponge in current system. The coanocytes or collar cells which are flagellated cells that generate water currents and capture food and the oscula openings through which water is expelled. Cell types The sponges lack a well-defined organization of tissues. Single layers of cells line the outer surface of the body and the internal cavities. Other cells, both motile and fixed, and fibers occur in an amorphous substance, gelatinous in nature. It has not been possible thus far to identify with certainty similarities of origin between the various types of spawn cells and those of higher animals. Each type of sponge cell performs particular functions. The cells either may gather in certain areas of the sponge 
or form layers and membranes. They are easily modified both in form and function during larval development and during adult life. Furthermore, they have a remarkable ability to migrate and to transform from one cell type to another, although the mechanisms involved are not known. Three principal types of cells may be distinguished, coanocytes, archaeocytes and pinacocytes, colonocytes. Four classes make up the phylum Nidaria, Anthozoa, which includes sea anemones and coral, Cubozoa, which includes Portuguese man of war, Hydrozoa, which includes jellyfish, Cyphozoa, which includes box jellies. Phylum Nidaria are aquatic invertebrates, including the classes Hydrozoa, Cyphozoa, Cubozoa, and Anthozoa. These species are classified by their radiosymmetry, the formation and structure of their bodies, their ability to sting, and the fact that they routinely eat, poop, and make babies out of one singular orifice. Nice. Within Phylum Nidaria, there are currently about 9,000 species known to man, a hundred of which are toxic to humans. Although these species can vary greatly in terms of size and coloration, the basic formation of their bodies are always the same. Nidarians are generally cylindrical, or shaped like a bell or an umbrella. Depending on whether the opening in the organism is facing upwards, as in anemones, or downwards, as in jellyfish, they are either classified as a polyp or a medusa structure respectively. The bodies of Nidarians are diploblastic, meaning that they have two layers of cells that make up their body. Between these layers is the jelly, the mesoglea, which serves as the glue which holds the layers together. As a whole, the entire phyla of cnidarians are carnivorous, due to the fact that polyps are typically sessile, which means that they do not move their location, and only some medusoid organisms have sensory structures, it is believed that jellyfish do not hunt. They have simply perfected the art of being at the right place at the right time. When an organism such as a fish or plankton swims into the tentacles of a cnidarian, they become tangled up and are then transported to a digestive cavity deep within the organism. However, as in corals and other forms of cnidaria, jellyfish also absorb nutrients from the water around them and in some cases can form a symbiotic relationship with algae. Cnidarians also have no need for most of the organs found in other organisms, such as a heart and a brain. Instead, a net of specialized tissues allows the animals to feel their way through life, essentially a nervous system without a control center. The ability to sting in cnidarians comes from the animal's nematocytes, which surround the edge of the mouth bud. These organelles can be described as pressure points, which when triggered will harpoon prey or predators with a small, thin, needle-like structure containing venom. It is this venom that causes the sting. The best defense against the cnidarian sting is a tough layer of skin that the nematocytes cannot penetrate. This is also the reason that some animals are able to live in close contact with anemones and jellyfish, whereas others are not. In corals, reproduction is always done asexually. However, in a jellyfish, it can either reproduce sexually or asexually, depending on its stage in life. Mainly due to the fact that corals cannot move, they generally form colonies around themselves when they reproduce. Jellyfish, however, have a much different looking life cycle. During reproduction, the male releases sperm through its mouth bud openly into the water, hoping that it will be absorbed into another jellyfish unknowingly. Fertilization and early embryonic development occur here until a larva is formed. This larva will then leave the jellyfish and after several days will attach itself to a firm surface such as the sea floor and gradually transform into a flower-like polyp called a strome. Then, when conditions are right, these fully developed polyps will develop into a stromula, which resembles a stack of discs as shown. Each individual disc will then develop and separate itself from the stack, forming a medusa of their own and thus continuing the cycle once more. 
Although fossilized corals have been found, it is extremely tough to track the soft-bodied cnidarians through time. However, due to fossilized impressions found within soft mud, we can now deduce that jellyfish have existed for at least 570 million years, emerging in the Ediacaran period. This leads scientists to believe that cnidarians are among the first examples of anything resembling intelligence on Earth. The video here will teach us about phylum platyhelminthus, commonly called flatworms. Of all living phyla, Arthropoda is the largest phylum with more than 9 lakh known species. This is the oldest and most biologically successful group. Arthropods occur in all habitats almost everywhere in the world. They are bilaterally symmetrical, segmented animals. The body of arthropods is divided into a head and a trunk. The trunk may be divided into a thorax and an abdomen as found in the case of insects. In some animals such as crabs, the thorax fuses with the head and thus their body is divided into the cephalothorax and the abdomen. The body of arthropods is covered with an exoskeleton made of chitin, which is very hard. This exoskeleton is shed periodically in the course of their growth and the process is known as ecdysis or molting. Arthropods have an open circulatory system. Their body contains a cavity called hemocele, which surrounds the body organs. The heart pumps blood into this hemocele so that the blood bathes the organs. The respiratory organs found in arthropods are gills in aquatic forms, while trachea or book lungs in terrestrial forms. The excretion takes place by coelomoducts or by malpighian tubules. The nervous system of arthropods is well developed and is like the one found in annelids. It consists of a cerebral ganglion attached to a pair of ventral nerve cord with the help of a nerve ring surrounding the pharynx. Arthropods also show the presence of an endocrine system. Insects communicate through pheromones, which are secreted by the endocrine system. In arthropods, the sexes are separate. They are oviparous in nature, which means that they lay eggs. Scorpions are an exception to this fact, as they are viviparous. Arthropods have well-developed sense organs, such as antenna, to perceive sense of touch a statocyst, an organ of balance, taste receptors located in their feet and photoreceptors in the eyes to perceive light. Phylum Arthropoda is divided into five classes Crustacea, Chylopoda, Diplopoda, Insecta and Arachnida. Class Crustacea includes a wide range of animals, mostly aquatic. They show great variation in form and the presence of carapace, exoskeleton and compound eye. Some examples are Daphnia, water flea and Astacus, crayfish. Class Chylopoda includes centipedes. Their body consists of numerous pairs of legs. There is always one pair per segment. They also show the presence of a pair of poison claws. Class Diplopoda includes millipedes. Their body consists of numerous leg-bearing segments with two pairs of legs per segment. Class insects is the largest group of terrestrial animals. They occupy every possible habitat. They have an extra ability to adapt to changes in the environment. 
their mouth parts such as mandibles and maxillae are modified for various modes of feeding. Round worms are the most common of the parasitic worms found inside a dog. Almost all dogs become infected with them at some time in their lives, usually as puppies. Round worms may be contracted in different ways, making them easy to spread and hard to control. Characteristics of brown worms are slender, unsegmented worms with tapering ends and three germ layers. Brown worms have no internal transport, so diffusion carries nutrients through the body. Roundworms reproduce sexually through internal fertilization. Roundworms don't have any specialized organs for gas exchange. Instead, it occurs across the body called diffusion. Roundworms are carnivores that eat small animals with their grasping mouth parts. Roundworms exchange gases and excrete metabolic waste through their body walls and they all, while also going through the process of diffusion. As seen here, a major difference between humans and roundworms is roundworms use diffusion for respiration, circulation, and excretion. Look at the characteristics of annelids. Synapomorphies of annelida. The monophyly of annelida is not well supported and only two morphological features are worthy of discussion, segmentation and KT. Nuchal organs represent another possible apomorphy. Metamerism, segmentation. Annelids have three body regions. The majority of the body is comprised of repeated units called segments. The original French use of the name annelids 
comes from the Latin word annulus meaning a little ring in reference to the presence of the ring-like segments. Each segment is in principle limited by septa dividing it from neighboring segments and has a fluid filled cavity within referred to as a coelom. Structures such as the excretory, locomotory and respiratory organs are generally repeated in each segment. Segments are formed sequentially in annelids and are established during development from growth zones located at the posterior end of the body. So the youngest segment in the body of an annelid is always the most posterior. The only parts of the annelid body that are not segmental are the head and a terminal post-segmental region called the pygidium. The head is comprised of two units, the prostomium and the peristomium. The post-segmental pygidium includes the zone from which new segments are proliferated during growth. The proposed homology of segmentation seen in annelids with that seen in arthropoda has been used to unite the two as articulata, a grouping that dates back to Cuvier. The homology of this segmentation has been questioned recently with anthropods now viewed by many as closer to taxa such as nematoda. This suggests that the form of segmentation seen in annelids may in fact represent an apomorphy. With regards to the supposedly unsegmented ischura, their reinstatement within annelida suggests that their apparently unsegmented body in fact represents a series of fused segments. Kaiti, a distinctive feature of annelids is structures called kaiti, also called setae, are bundles of chitinous thin-walled cylinders held together by sclerotinized protein. They are produced by a microvillar border of certain invaginated epidermal cells and so can be defined as cuticular structures that develop within epidermal follicles. Cetae show a huge amount of variation from long thin filaments capillary setae to stout multi-pronged hooks. Apart from annelids, setae are found in Ecura and Brachiopoda. There is now good evidence that the former group falls within annelida. The position of Brachiopoda is controversial and the homology of their setae with those of annelids is unresolved. There is a distinct possibility, therefore, that setae represent an apomorphy for annelida. Of all living phyla, Arthropoda is the largest phylum with more than 9 lakh known species. This is the oldest and most biologically successful group. Arthropods occur in all habitats almost everywhere in the world. They are bilaterally symmetrical, segmented animals. The body of arthropods is divided into a head and a trunk. The trunk may be divided into a thorax and an abdomen as found in the case of insects. In some animals such as crabs, the thorax fuses with the head and thus their body is divided into the cephalothorax and the abdomen. The body of arthropods is covered with an exoskeleton made of chitin which is very hard. This exoskeleton is shed periodically in the course of their growth and the process is known as ecdysis or molting. Arthropods have an open circulatory system. Their body contains a cavity called hemocele which surrounds the body organs. The heart pumps blood into this hemocele so that the blood bathes the organs. The respiratory organs found in arthropods are gills in aquatic forms 
while trachea or book lungs in terrestrial forms. The excretion takes place by coelomoducts or by malpighian tubules. The nervous system of arthropods is well developed and is like the one found in annelids. It consists of a cerebral ganglion attached to a pair of ventral nerve cord with the help of a nerve ring surrounding the pharynx. Arthropods also show the presence of an endocrine system. Insects communicate through pheromones which are secreted by the endocrine system. In arthropods, the sexes are separate. They are oviparous in nature, which means that they lay eggs. Scorpions are an exception to this fact, as they are viviparous. Arthropods have well-developed sense organs, such as antenna, to perceive sense of touch, a statocyst, an organ of balance, taste receptors located in their feet, and photoreceptors in the eyes to perceive light. Phylum Arthropoda is divided into five classes. Crustacea, Chylopoda, Diplopoda, Insecta, and Arachnida. Class Crustacea includes a wide range of animals, mostly aquatic. They show great variation in form and the presence of carapace, exoskeleton, and compound eye. Some examples are Daphnia, water flea, and Astacus, crayfish. Class Chylopoda include centipedes. Their body consists of numerous pairs of legs. There is always one pair per segment. They also show the presence of a pair of poison claws. Class Diplopoda includes millipedes. Their body consists of numerous leg-bearing segments with two pairs of legs per segment. Class Insects is the largest group of terrestrial animals. They occupy every possible habitat. They have an extra ability to adapt to changes in the environment. Their mouth parts such as mandibles and maxillae are modified for various modes of feeding. They show the presence of pupal stage, that is, an incubation stage in their life cycle. This stage helps them to survive during unfavorable environmental condition. Some very common examples of insects are ants, cockroaches, mosquitoes and butterflies. Arachnida, the last class under the phylum Arthropoda, includes spiders and scorpions and is known for eight-legged arthropods. Their body is separated into a cephalothorax and an abdomen. Arachnids breathe in through book lungs or trachea. Most of the flying insects act as pollinating agents and help flowers to cross-pollinate. Arthropods such as crabs, prawns serve as delicious seafood which people like to eat. But several insects are serious pests that destroy crops worth billions of rupees. Termites cause damage to timber, houses and furniture. Parasites such as lice Fleas and mosquitoes spread diseases in humans and animals. For example, mosquitoes are vectors of malaria. Echinoderms, scientific name Echinodermata, are a major group of only marine animals. The name comes from the Greek word for spiny skin. There are about 7,000 species found usually on the seafloor in every marine habitat from the intertidal zone to the ocean depths. They have a wide variety of colors. There are at least 800 species of echinoderm 
on the Great Barrier Reef. Digestive system. Echinoderms have a simple digestive system with the mouth, stomach, intestine and anus. In many, the mouth is on the underside and the anus on the top surface of the animal. Sea stars can push their stomachs outside of their body and insert it into its prey allowing them to digest the food externally. This ability allows sea stars to hunt prey that are much larger than its mouth would otherwise allow. Nervous system and senses. Echinoderms do not have brains. They have nerves running from the mouth into each arm or along the body. They have tiny eye spots at the end of each arm which only detect light or dark. Some of their tube feet are also sensitive to chemicals and this allows them to find the source of smells such as food. Circulatory system. Echinoderms have a network of fluid filled canals that function in gas exchange, feeding and in movement. The network contains a central ring and areas which contain the tube feet which stretch along the body or arms. The tube feet poke through holes in the skeleton and can be extended or contracted. They do not have a true heart and the blood often lacks any respiratory pigment, pike hemoglobin. Respiratory system Echinoderms have a poorly developed respiratory system. They use simple gills and their tube feet to take in oxygen and pass out carbon dioxide. Reproductive system. Echinoderms are either male or female and become sexually mature after about two to three years. Most release their eggs and sperm into the water where they are fertilized. A female can release 100 million eggs at once. Larvae develop which eventually settle on the sea floor in their adult form. If an arm breaks off some echinoderms, a new arm or even a new echinoderm can regrow. Some sea stars and brittle stars have the ability to reproduce asexually by dividing in two halves while they are small juveniles. Excretory system. Echinoderms have a simple excretory system with no kidneys and use diffusion to rid their bodies of nitrogenous waste which is mainly ammonia gas. Their lifestyles vary greatly depending on which group of echinoderms a species belongs to. Sea stars are generally predators or detritivores eating decomposing animal and plant material. Crinoids and some brittle stars are passive filter feeders absorbing suspended particles from passing water. Sea urchins are grazing herbivores and sea cucumbers deposit feeders removing food particles from sand or mud. Crabs, sharks, eels and other fish, seabirds, octopuses and larger starfish are predators of echinoderms. Echinoderms use their skeletons, spines, toxins and the discharge of sticky entangling threads by sea cucumbers as defense mechanisms against predators. Chordates are coelomate animals that possess a supporting rod or notochord, a single hollow dorsal nerve cord, metameric segmentation division of the body muscles into similar units known as segments that are arranged serially one behind the other. Gills at some stage of their lives, slit-like openings leading from the pharynx, throat region to the outside of the body. Typically a post-anal tail, a region of the body behind the anus that does not contain any part of the gut. There are two kinds of chordates, vertebrate chordates and invertebrate chordates. Vertebrate chordates. They differ from the invertebrate chordates in possessing an internal skeleton including a vertebral column which encloses the nerve cord, a brain enclosed in a skull, 
a pumping heart and efficient blood circulation. There are four classes of recent vertebrates, amphibians, reptiles, birds and mammals. Invertebrate chordates, chordates and pterobranch and enteronist hemichordates, example Tychodera australiensis and Belangioglossus sp possess pharyngeal gill slits and a dorsal nerve cord. Pterobrands such as C. gilchristi and C. agglutinians are in turn remarkably similar repeat are in turn remarkably similar to graptolites like Climatograptus sp. Phylogeny of the invertebrates Current concepts of invertebrate phylogeny are reviewed. Annelida and Arthropoda regarded as closely related are now placed in separate clades. Myelin, a sheath of multiple layers of membranes around nerve axons is found in members of the Annelida, Arthropoda and Chordata. The structure, composition and function of the sheaths in Annelida and Arthropoda are examined and evidence for the separate evolutionary origins of myelin in the three clades is presented. That myelin has arisen independently at least three times, namely in annelids, arthropodas and chordates, provides a remarkable example of convergent evolution. Feeding and digestion, vacuolar systems, unicellular organisms that ingest food particles via vacuoles rely on intracellular digestion to prepare the nutrients for use. The enzymes that catalyze this digestion being very potent chemicals capable of breaking down the cell substance itself are held until needed in special packets or vesicles called lysosomes. The membrane of a lysosome is both impermeable to the enzymes and capable of resisting their hydrolytic action. Soon after a food vacuole is formed, a lysosome fuses with it. Food material and digestive enzymes are mixed in the resulting composite vesicle, which is sometimes called a digestive vacuole. This vacuole moves in an orderly fashion through the cell during which passage the products of digestion are absorbed, leaving the indigestible material, which is eventually expelled. Channel Network System The sponges among the simplest multicellular organisms have what amounts to diversionary water channels that serve to bring water and food to their component cells. The channels are lined with special cells bearing whip-like structures called flagella that create water currents. A steady flow of water inward through smaller secondary channels and then out the main or excurrent canal carries with it bits of food. The lining cells capture the food particles and enclose them in food vacuoles wherein the matter is digested as in protozoans by intracellular means. Circulation Most arthropods and some advanced mollusks such as squid and octopuses have an open circulatory system. The blood delivers food and other materials to cells and picks up wastes. Animals with open circulatory systems depend on the respiratory system to transport oxygen and carbon dioxide. The blood moves slowly from the head to the tail end of the animal. At the posterior, the blood re-enters the heart through the openings. Contraction of muscles helps speed up the blood flow. Excretion Some invertebrates, notably echinoderms, cnidarians and sponges, have no organs to which an excretory function can be confidently ascribed. Since all of these animals are aquatic, it is reasonable to suppose that they excrete nitrogen as ammonia by simple diffusion. Their body fluids, where present, are closely similar to seawater in composition and it may be presumed 
that regulation operates only at the cellular level. The excretory organs of other invertebrates are of diverse evolutionary origin. This is not to say, however, that each invertebrate phylum has evolved its own particular type of excretory organ. Rather, there appear to be five main types of invertebrate excretory organ. Contractile vacuole, nephridium, renal gland, coxal gland and malphigian tubule. Now in the end, let us summarize what we have learned in this lecture. Sponges were the first group of animals that has specialized cells to do special jobs. Polyps have a tube-like body with an opening on top that is surrounded by outward and upward facing tentacles. Medusae are usually bell-shaped animals with a concave oral surface or mouth and tentacles that dangle downward from the rim of an umbrella-like body. Nidarian bodies have only one opening that serves as both mouth and anus. Most hydroid polyps secrete a horny, chitinous external skeleton that is essentially a tube around the polyp and the network of stolons that interconnect members of a colony. Annelids have three body regions. The majority of the body is comprised of repeated units called segments. Echinoderms have radial symmetry, many having five or multiples of five arms. Crustaceans have ten or more legs. Most are aquatic, which means they live in water. Arachnids have eight legs. Spiders are perhaps the best known arachnid. Unicellular organisms that ingest food particles via vacuoles rely on intracellular digestion to prepare the nutrients for use. Animal circulation depends on the contraction of a pump, usually a heart that pumps blood in one direction through vessels along a circulatory path. Most arthropods and some advanced mollusks such as squid and octopuses have an open circulatory system.